thank you so much again for attending, and I'm really excited to be back in Singapore for the first time in a number of years. I unfortunately missed the very last event uh, as I was off on maternity leave with my daughter. Um, so it's, only, it's been four years uh, since I've been here, um, and it's just incredible to see all of the familiar faces once again. All right, consumer trust. We've heard it peppered through every conversation that's happened today in some shape and form. Um, it's a very meaty topic. I've only got 10 minutes to cover it, so I can't go as deep as I would love. Uh, but I know we're going to get to a really interesting conversation with Kieran at the end. I'll start today with a quick introduction to Index Exchange for those unfamiliar with us and the work that we do. We're a global advertising ecosystem, oh, sorry, marketplace that enables media owners to grow revenue by helping marketers reach consumers through any screen and any ad format. We've been in business since the inception of ad tech and our aim is to deliver total market efficiency and value to the programmatic ecosystem. The programmatic industry is synonymous with pervasive reach and endless growing scale. Constant evolution is important for growth, but as the digital industry becomes more complex, our ability to understand and communicate with consumers is the key to sustaining this growth. The pandemic was the catalyst for rapid digital growth across Southeast Asia, making it one of the world's most connected regions in 2022. By market, the Philippines recorded the highest population, sorry, proportion of new digital consumers with a 20% growth in the internet population in 2022 alone. The region grew further as Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Singapore all achieved double-digit growth. By 2026, Southeast Asia's digital consumer population is expected to reach 380 million users. During this digital evolution, consumers embrace smartphones for a range of purposes, mobile payments, videos, gaming, ride hailing, and food delivery. As a result, Southeast Asia is seeing the fastest digital sales growth globally as well. According to Statista, e-commerce sales will amount to $89 billion in 2022. They're projected to hit USD 1.92 sorry, 1 trillion by 2024. By then, Asian economies should account for 61.4% of the global e-commerce market. This growth is driven by a mixture of growing middle class, improved logistics networks, financial infrastructure, digital infrastructure, and the access to digital payments. Our new digital consumer is a connected consumer. They're highly engaged in their online world and are mobile first. The expansion of mobile internet access, along with the introduction of gaming super apps and streaming platforms, has spurred a further shift in mobile content consumption. Today's consumer has on average 3.1 devices and alternates between those depending on their viewing preferences for the content that they're consuming. According to McKinsey research from 2021, the average consumer in APAC spends more than six hours a day on their mobile phones, ferociously consuming video content. This is double that of consumers in the US and UK who spend between two and three hours a day. Further focusing in on Singapore specifically, a recent study conducted by Avia indicates that Singaporeans primarily enjoy watching streaming video content in their office commute. Our new connected consumer is a more informed consumer with an increased awareness of their digital footprint. Unfortunately, over the last few years, through increased media coverage, shining light on nefarious activities, the tech ecosystem has lost trust with our users. While improvements to infrastructure and connectivity are necessary for growth, the restoration of consumer trust is imperative for our industry to meet the needs of our growing consumer base. For trust in advertising to be rebuilt, there is an onus on each of us within this room, within the value chain, to play our part in the process. Many small actions over time. The way in which brands and platforms have connected consumer data in the past has impacted the consumer's willingness to share that data, resulting in an inflated mistrust of digital advertising. A further recent study shows that 62% of consumers expect a personalized advertising experience, but only 40% say that they trust brands to use their data responsibly. 
Over the last few years in particular, there's been an increased focus on rebuilding consumer rep, um, perception of the digital in industry. From sweeping changes to privacy regulations, as been mentioned before, changes like GDPR and CCPA, Apple's changes to ATT, and more targeted efforts from publishers to inform their consumers of the value exchange on their websites. Each of these changes are part of a movement to help consumers feel safer and in more control online. Changing consumption patterns have introduced the birth of an entirely new consumer, one that craves the premium content and experiences that many of the owners in this room provide to them. It's imperative that we continue to drive awareness and educate the users on the value exchange within the ad-funded open internet. Trust is rebuilt when consumers feel informed, empowered, and in control in their digital world. As players in this digital ecosystem, ad tech providers, media owners, and advertisers must each play their part proactively to address these changes. Consumers have never been more engaged in this digital world, which provides an even greater opportunity for programmatic to create a more equitable and secure and trusted marketplace. The future of advertising begins and ends with the consumer. Without it, marketers are in a fractured pursuit of consumer engagement and their loyalty. We all have a, play, a role to play in shaping this future, and our paths are our own individually. Holding ourselves and our partners to account, taking a consumer-centric view as we build our businesses for tomorrow. It may seem like a large task at the outset, but through many conscious actions, over time, we will rebuild and improve upon the consumer trust. Thank you. Over here. Right. Hello. Talk, talk. Hello. Is this on? Hello. Same people. Do you want here? Hello. Oh, there you go. That's mine then. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, so, thank you, Adele, for that presentation. I, I just want to take it through like, sort of an ad tech lens because I always, I always do. Yeah. So we talk about the consumption pattern change in, in, in this part of the world particularly, right? So from an ad tech perspective, what do you see as the most exciting sort of a, sort of, you know, a piece of that puzzle? Like we're seeing, is it like the CTV piece? Is it the at home piece? Like what, what, do you, what do you see as real opportunity for ad tech in that sort of changing behavior? Yeah, I think it's absolutely fascinating for us. I, you know, coming from predominantly a, a North American background, we've grown up in, you know, desktop. And Asia is an, a mobile first market. And so there is an incredible amount of opportunity um, and a lot of excitement around um, the mobile experience uh, and CTV and almost like OTT as a, as a function of uh, mobile consumption as well. So I think those two worlds are coming together at this like most opportune time for us in this region. Um, and that's where, that's where I'm most excited anyway. So I'm confused about CTV and OTT in this region, right? So. Where is that happening, right? Is it is it a case is that people are just going to YouTube or TikTok or where do you like so is the big opportunity for ad tech in ad funded streaming and, and what is it like what is that like in this region, right? So like let's take a step back when we look at C T V globally, everybody's excited about the Plutos and the tub eyes, I don't really know how many people are watching reruns of Baywatch and whatever else crap they have on there. But here, I'm just curious, what is it, what is it that's driving CTV adoption or OTT? What, what type of like, channels, what type of uh, um, platforms is driving that? I'm just curious. I think there's a number of regional players. And, and that's, I think, where there's um, a, a fair amount of opportunity uh, in that, you know, if I was to look and compare Southeast Asia to Australia, for example, um, Australia leans very heavily on global um, you know, websites and TV shows, etc. Very, you know, hooked to Friends. Probably less on Baywatch, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about my own experience watching Pluto TV. I'm probably the only user that watches Pluto TV in the UK, and yet there's millions of us apparently. There you go. Um, but no, I think the, the local language content is just like, it's, a, it's incredibly vibrant. There is so much content that consumers in these regional markets are, are, are ingesting daily. Um, you know, platforms that are built local, grown local, and, and are, are becoming more regional and, and global in their nature through the, um, the proliferation. Of are, they, are they genuinely 
are they like generally ad funded or would they be subscription based? But are they like now like looking at Netflix and say, like like Netflix realizing that most of the world can't afford subscription and ads are actually a really good way of making money. Yeah, it's interesting. I think uh, many many come. Uh, look, I guess it depends where they're born from, right? Um, some are, are amalgamations. So you've got Disney Hotstar in India, for example. But then you've got you know View and Vicky, which are built um, specific. They're, they're local markets. Um, there, there will, in terms of how they're approaching it, it's different for every one of them, um, based on you know how they've how they've structured their monetization strategy and. You know, to your point, you know, Netflix started as just a subscription model and has evolved from there. Um, we will probably see evolutions occurring in this space around, you know, the ad-funded side of it. Yeah, um, and that's, yeah. that's where ad tech could play a huge role in helping monetize that. Absolutely. It's where the advertisers want to, re you know, reach their consumers. And, and the more that, um, uh, you know, if we look at um, linear TV and its move to online, um, which has happened over the last couple of years, it's enabled advertisers to like extend the reach further in that that immersive video experience and and you know TV advertising ultimately. You, there was a big big feature there around trust and consumer trust. It's probably worth noting, like from a, from a global perspective, privacy feels a bit dare I say it, loose out here in APAC. Uh, in Europe, you have very strict regulations around data use. Mm. Um, in the US, you have Apple, who are the biggest biggest player in that market, have just decided to take the law into their own hands and clamp down. Obviously, with Chrome being so strong here and Android being so strong here, you don't have that technology um, that's pushing back because mm. Google are... Who knows what Google is doing? To be honest with you, uh, half the time they don't know what they're doing. One one department doesn't know what the other department is so big; they make so much money, um, which is annoying. Uh, um, so so so, what can we as an industry do? What do we do? We, do we self police? Because it yeah. it's very hard to kind of like get trust when there is no framework for for any user to opt out of the process, right? If everybody's using Android and Chrome. Where are the where are the processes that allow you to opt out? Because that's the problem. I, I totally agree. Mm. We need to kind of engender trust in the space, and it's interesting that you brought that up. But do you think the industry as a whole could do, like the IAB or or, or more or less, could do something, like mm. at least start the process by self-regulating? It, it has to start with self-regulation, right? Like we we because if we don't do it, the governments are going to, um, and we've seen that exactly happening in Australia. Um, you know, off the back of the platform investigations of the ACCC. Um, so I think I think there's definitely an opportunity to start. Um, it starts with a conversation. It starts with informing the users around. You know, why are we asking for a subscription, or why are we asking for you to enter your email address to access this website? Um, or even just a simple banner at the bottom um, that says, you know, be aware that you know these ads on this website fund the incredible content that you're consuming. Would you would you subscribe to something like the TCF in Europe, even though that's been uh, officially labelled as illegal by, by a judge in Belgium, uh, and now is fighting a big case in uh, in the European Union Court of Justice, I think, in a couple of months. But do you think something like that would be a good start start because it, it bring all the vendors going, you know, opt out of the process? Would you like? you know, data to be used in the process type of thing? I, I, it may work. Um, it's just a question of, like, how fragmented each of the markets are and whether it can be broad and encompassing. You know, I think Europe is, a, is an interesting example because it is that amalgamation of many markets um, under that framework. But um, it's, it's tricky to say what we should, you know, it, it, there isn't one particular strategy we should be employing. Um, I think the big ask... And, and you know, learning from our experiences as global companies, you know, we can look to implement best practices and guide our partners around how they can continue to inform and lean into uh, you know, the work that the IAB is doing, for example, globally. I know they work with a number of the different governments and in an advisory capacity, you know, arm them with the information, like uh, help them understand the, the issue that they're facing with regards to privacy regulation. Um, there needs to be a much larger discussion that's happening um, or that needs to happen. Um, and then I think, you know, the framework hopefully won't be needed because the industry would course correct itself. Yeah. Well, it is an absolute pleasure, Adele, to see you back in uh, Singapore. In the flesh. In the flesh. And uh, 
If you want to talk about CTV or even what we're going to try and do in terms of improve the trust factor in the industry, come talk to Adele. She's going to be here all day <laughs> and tomorrow. Yes. So Adele, thank you very much for today. Appreciate and, it. Uh, thank you, Kieran. Welcome back to Singapore. Back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.